All righty, we're back. Uh, episode 11. Um, man, I can't believe we're already this far into this whole podcast. It's been a good start so far over the first few months. Uh, you know, we've got pretty, a couple good things to talk about. Pretty uh, jam-packed show. Uh, Brandon has to pay for a bet. Uh, we're going to cover um, a little bit about softball, a little bit of golf, uh, a little football recruiting, and uh, watch Brandon pay his bet back. Um, so without further ado, we'll kick off the bet and or bet payment. And if anyone hadn't seen or, or why he's doing this, well, last week during our recording, the Miami Heat and the Milwaukee Bucks were playing. It was 2 nothing in the series at the time, and it was at halftime. The uh, Milwaukee Bucks were up about 20 points, 15 it was like points. 15 or okay, 15. 15 points. And Brandon claimed that the Heat were going to win two straight at home. And he made that bet knowing at halftime they were down by double digits. Confident. And obviously, you know, it was a full on sweep, not very competitive. And here it is. So Brandon now has to shotgun three beers. I don't want to in three Hunter years. Celtics three beers. I was being honest. I, I thought we would get swept, but we got gentlemen swept and, ga- and they gave you us did. one. You so, did. um, Brandon, go ahead. That's tough. No, oh, that's tough. That's hard. Oh, that doesn't look very good. Actually, it wasn't bad. No. Oh, it's like, right. a, uh, I don't know if you guys ever had these. I've never seen them before in my mom's house. <laughs> Margarita craft cocktail. Host, yeah. you said you had one? No, I've had the other ones that you're going to do later, though. Those other yes. ones are yummy. So that's a Brandon endorsement right there. That's free advertising. <laughs> I do. I endorse <laughs> margarita cra- the Fling Margarita Craft Cocktails. Yeah. Let's right. do the well, show that's... about that this week, boys. Yeah. All <laughs> right. So we got a good little start. Um, I think the first topic, uh, we'll, we'll go with softball. Um, softball, obviously, they're, um, they made it to the Women's College World Series. Uh, not really a surprise. And, and they've swept their way through as we expected them to because of how good they are. Um, they, they swept against Washington. Um, you know, both games, you know, the first one was kind of, you know, it was pretty close, but the second one wasn't very competitive. Uh, what were you guys' biggest takeaway? Brandon, you want to start us off? I can. Uh, it's, I think we actually talked about it. If you go back and watch last week's episode, we kind of, I think we picked game one to be somewhat competitive, you know, just, I mean, they're not a bad team, Washington. Um, and that's kind of what we got. But at the same time, it's a game that I feel like Oklahoma controlled the whole time. Never trailed at some points. It was, I think our biggest lead was what, 4-1, 4-0? I can't remember. In that game, yeah, it might have been 4-1, 4-0, you know, they, somewhere in there. They made it interesting there in the seventh. You know, they had a couple base runners. And you know the plate, the plate that ends it. Mm-hmm. But uh, overall, I think yeah, it's, it's exactly what we expected. And like, just we, we we talked about it, we nailed it. You know, first game yeah. kind of competitive, not a bad team. Second game, you know, the girls really came out and beat the hell out yeah. of them. Yeah, and Jose, what what are you thinking? Anything to add on to there? Yeah, no, I think th- the stars came out for Oklahoma. We like we said last week, and uh, we were confident in our bats. It was just how we were going to perform against their their pitching, and they did what they needed to do. You know, Alo. She going a little bit forward to what we're going to talk about in a second, the national player of the year. She did her job. She showed why she got that reward. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the girls did, you know, did their jobs as well as, as best as they could. Um, I was a little nervous. I think if you go back, I said that the key is going to be our outfielders. I think I pointed out Jada Coleman specifically. They, I mean, they performed, they did what they needed to. I don't think they had any mistakes, at least no crucial mistakes, obviously, since we, run ruled game two so it, it was a good good time to be an Oklahoma fan the one yeah, thing I talked to, oh sorry bro no all I was gonna say is I was really impressed with our pitching I think that's our not, pitching was fantastic yeah. exactly what I was gonna say because that's the one point we were worried about you know like I mean it's been a little shaky you know as of late you know going against Oklahoma State and some of those teams but yeah I mean Nicole May I didn't think anybody saw her start in game one and she I mean she went the, she went the distance and only yeah. gave up Two earned, two maybe not even two earned. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean it was. No, they had two, but I'm not. They were both earned. It was, it was really good. It was a good surprise, and I think she's going to obviously be heavily relied on in this next series um, coming up against James Madison, and you know, as we move on, uh, I think she's definitely going to be relied on. Um, but moving on, you know, there were some rewards given out uh, this past week. 
And as Jose, um, you know, said a little bit earlier, and most people probably already know, um, Alo Player of the Year, which, you know, for me, that's not really a surprise. I mean, with 30 home runs, tied the school record, uh, you know, for single single season home runs, most in the, most in one year. Um, she she's just incredible, and she's um, homered in more games than she hasn't. Yeah, that's a stat. That's a real stat. That is crazy. And she's going to be able to come back next year and probably set the home run record as far as, you know, most in a career. And she's, she's yeah, she's, she's I mean, how far off of, of Chamberlain's pace is she? It can't be much. No, I think she's going, I mean, I, I don't know exactly. I can't remember how many Chamberlain had. I know two seasons Chamberlain had 30 home runs in two years and all those had two 30 home run seasons. And so she still has more. I mean, at the least, she has three or two more games at minimum. If we're doing bold prediction season that we like to do on this show, Pierre Jennings, another segue into freshman player of the year, who won that, she can beat both of them. I mean, she was only a In freshman this year, but she, she hit she hit 25 plus, I think. Yeah, yeah, she's over 25, yeah. I mean, for a freshman, that's just – I don't care what sport that is. If that's softball or baseball, that's incredible to come in as a freshman. Her batting average is a freshman better than better than Allo and Chamberlain's. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing. There's no reason why she can't. And like like you said, she's a freshman. So and Allo's got another year. So you've got both of those bats coming back next year, regardless of what happens. I mean, that's that's you almost back, unfair. I think all of the All Americans that are named this year get to come back, right? I'm not I sure about so. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Was, Lines was the only one I wasn't sure of, but I was pretty – I think everyone else. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, be it's, back. Pretty, it's pretty incredible. And obviously, um, the All-American list, Alo, T.R.A. Jennings, uh, Kinsey Hansen, Jada Coleman, and Grace Lyons, which I don't think that's any surprise, but it's pretty impressive that we have five All-Americans in our, in our starting lineup that's – it's not too shabby. That, that's kind of why you go 40-something and two. You know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. I think we're actually about to go over 50 wins if we aren't already. So, that's, I mean, you know, incredible. I mean, the What do team... you guys think hmm? about the James Madison matchup? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have predicted them to be here, you know, looking at this bracket and when they got invited. Um, you know, they – they're kind of like a Cinderella story. I mean, they are 39 and two, so I don't know if they're necessarily a Cinderella or not, other than, you know, being outside of the power five uh, conference. Um, yeah. I think, I think they're going to be a tough matchup. They've got a great pitcher and Alexander um, with a 1.14 ERA on the season, 186 strikeouts, just a solid, solid team all the way around. But, my opinion, I, I don't think they're going to pose that much of a threat to to the OU. Yeah. I don't think so. Our, our bats are hot at the right time. Like we like we said last time, we were concerned bats versus their the pitching of Washington. And I, I don't know how to pronounce her first name, but Alexander is obviously great at pitching. And we'll, like you said, a one one four ERA. So I think that she's about to run into probably the hardest matchup that she has probably faced definitely this year, potentially in her career as a softball player at James Madison. So I don't know if, I mean, Oklahoma were what, less than 10 away from the all time uh, home run record. Yeah, we're getting close. Season. We're, I know, I think it was during the first game, we ended up like 12 shy. So we should be mm -hmm. under 10 now at this point. But yeah, it's going to be, Tough for her, but she can do it. And I think I saw an article that said she's also their their lead batter. So she's got her hands full. Um, if she can perform well, she's obviously going to be um, you know, going to be a tough player to to try to bother a little bit for our pitching. But yeah, you know, well, and I think I don't think it's going to be much of a competition if she can't show up. Like your yeah, two. I mean, you know, it, it'll be close. I think, like we've talked about, I think it's going to be competitive in game one, and and then they're probably going to figure figure out James Madison and maybe. Yeah, down him. for another beer bong bet. Yeah, if you want to. Two run already. 
All right. That sounds good to me. Two run rules. Two run rules. Okay. So you're taking that work that OU is going to run rule them twice. And then if they don't, you owe us two more. I owe you two more. All right. Okay. Hey, that, hey but if you're agreeing to it, if we do two run rules, I would happily. You two. Yeah, then we would both have to do two. I would happily agree to that because that's. You could also use the bottle, in my opinion. I'm also going to endorse beer bongs while we're here. <laughs> Easier than a shotgun. Yeah, definitely. Let's get those endorsements coming. Beer yeah, bong I, company, let's do it. Yeah, I, sports. One day we need to make a beer bong. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, talking about pitching, they do have some great hitters. Uh, Sarah Juvis and Kate Gordon are kind of their power hitters, and they're kind of their anchors for their lineup. And you know, they've they've hit their fair share of home runs, higher batting averages, and that'll be something that. I'd imagine Nicole May is probably going to have to pitch against and, you know, Juarez, G. Juarez might pitch. I don't, I, I'm not sure. You never know with Patty. Sale, Patty Gaston. Do what? Could be Shannon Sale. Yeah, it could be. I, I just, you just never know with Patty. She can, she'll throw a wild card at you and, and keep, keep the, uh, the opponent on their toes. Um, but then we can start projecting. I hate to automatically assume that Oklahoma is going to win, but, my gut's telling me that they are uh, the path to yeah, the championship. Fight. Yeah, path to the championship. We're gonna uh, OU will play the winner of Georgia and um, Oklahoma State, and um, I'm gonna assume that Oklahoma State is going to beat Georgia um, for setting up a bedlam semifinals. You don't agree, Brandon? You think Georgia's gonna win? It. No, I I think it'd be fun. Because, I mean, nothing better than beating them, especially to get to the finals. That'd be really cool. But I, Georgia, I, th- I don't know. I think Georgia beats them. I don't even know why. I just think that. Yeah. I maybe think slightly like biased. An, 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 like, there's no analysis here. They're just going to beat them. Yeah. I Georgia mean, and uh, James Madison are the first unranked teams to make it this far since 2012, I believe. So, if they're hot, they're hot enough. You never yeah. know what can happen here. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia's extremely hot. They beat us towards the end of the season, I think within the last month of the season. Not only that, but didn't they beat – I think they beat the four seed to get here? Yeah, it was at yeah. Florida, Florida, right? Is that what they beat? Or yeah, Florida. Florida yeah, they, yeah. they both – both Georgia and James Madison have had extremely tough roads to get to the World Series. And they did. have even harder, harder roads to get to the finals. Yeah, Florida's probably better than Oklahoma State. I think Georgia already got their hard part out of the way. I mean, yeah. We'll see, but we'll see. And Madison definitely didn't get an easy draw. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, hypothetically, if OU does beat um, Oklahoma State or, or Georgia, they would probably end up playing um, UCLA. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, do you guys think UCLA will be the one coming on the other side? I mean, they look, they look pretty impressive. It seems like UCLA is, you know, it's us and UCLA are always a powerhouse in, in each season. It kind of feels like it just alternates, and so far it seems like this year's our year. Um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's the I'm going Alabama. Yeah, I've seen that. My, um, I forget her name. It's uh, the Alabama starting pitcher who's just been dealing. I think it's Montana mm-hmm. Fouts, I think is her name. I'll well, we just look mm-hmm. at that, but she's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe Bama against Oklahoma. Yeah. Yep. So, which that would be fun to beat an SEC team. You never can complain about that. Um, but, yeah, I think that's all we've got uh, for for softball, unless you guys have any final <laughs> thoughts. Just a quick update. Pepperdine has officially, officially won the Men's Golf National Championship. Another reason to drink. Yeah. <laughs> You know, things happen. Yeah, so, Brandon, go ahead and... This looks like a tasty drink. It's pink coming out. A little stressful. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. Yeah, this is cherry blossom and lime. Quirk. Yeah. Tell whoever that is to get the hell out. Grace. (laughs) Grace. I'm out. All right. Here's two, boys. <laughs> Two.
too. Pretty good. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. I, I mean, I like it. I don't recommend. Yeah, that's not a bong. That's, that's probably wouldn't. Bong. Bong. I was about to say I probably wouldn't bong them in, in under normal circumstances. But here we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that that'll move us on to our um, our next topic. We were going to discuss OU golf, and uh, obviously Jose has updated with uh, the official outcome. And it's extremely unfortunate that uh, OU is placed second um, for the national championship and to Pepperdine. And um, they've had a great run and it hurts getting all the way this, you know, this far and then losing. But, you know, yeah, OU didn't lose to Oklahoma State. So that's true. We did run into a, a very hot Pepperdine team. I feel like if I was watching their round yesterday against Oklahoma State, I think Oklahoma State was leading most matches through the yeah. front half of the, of the match. And then they got hot right in the back nine, the perfect time. And that took yeah, one guy on their team. I think he was matched up against Reban today. Um, when he was going against Oklahoma state, he was trailing by two or three. And then he hit a hole in one on eight or whatever the par three is. I think it's eight. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Yeah. He hole in one to that. And then from there, it just, and then Momentum. he hit that ridiculous shot. You guys want to talk about on, on 18 yesterday in the semis where he was in the uh, bunker. No, yes. I didn't see yes. it. I do remember that. Oh, yeah, that was, was, that was yeah, dude, that was he, dude, he was in the bunker. I think it was 185 yards out, and mm-hmm. he fucking piped one. Yeah, like, there, even really. the commentators were like, he's got to have the perfect contact to get, you know, to be in position to win this hole. Because if he doesn't, then it's it's OSU match. Mm-hmm. He, he did what he needed to do. And it, it, yeah. Obviously, it turned out well for Pepperdine. They ended up winning the national championship. Yeah, and, and you're talking about getting hot at the right time, I believe. Um, gosh, it was Sunday. They were playing um, Sunday or Monday. I think it was Monday, the last day of the cha- of the uh, the play to uh, to get the, the the final eight to go into match play. The last the last stroke play day. They actually started out, I believe, in like eighth place or or some or right outside the top eight and well, shot they- like, huh? If only they would have just missed the, the cut. I know. And then they got hot their last day of stroke play and went like 10 under when Oklahoma State was having a rough day. Oklahoma was having a rough day. They were the one of the few teams that was, were just playing incredible. And they just, you know, they figured out the course. And sometimes Here's that's what happens. You look at it and congrats to Pepperdine. You obviously, they like you said, they got hot at the right time. They took care of business. They won match plays, you know, beat Oklahoma State. Us, I forget who they beat in the quarterfinals, but you know, obviously, yeah, they, they, they did what they had to do. They wanted to be congrats, they're national champions. From 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 a, uh, the OU standpoint, how is your best golfer, your all American, you know, Garrett Reband, the guy, he's supposed to be your best golfer, shits the bed the entirety of this in stroke mm-hmm. play, shit the bed, match play, shit the bed. He got benched. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. If you look at the score today, we lost 3-2, and Reband was eliminated by a whole 15 or something. He just you, – you hate it for him. I mean, obviously, he – if we can see it, imagine how he feels. But that's – the game of golf. Like time to play your bad golf, your worst no golf. Matter, no matter how good you are at golf, you're going to you're gonna have bad days. And It's like what happened to Jordan Spieth, uh, what was it, like 2015? He won the Masters. He won one other major. And then after that, he's been silent. He just recently started competing again to, like, potentially win. It's been years since his, since his Masters win. No, I agree. It's just you really feel for him. Yeah, it's tough for him. Bad way to go out for sure. Can you hear can't, him? We can't hear you, bud. Something happened. Yeah, we lost you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying he, he probably is going to beat himself up um, – on that plane ride home. He's got oh, yeah. a chance, to, or, I mean, obviously not for a national championship, but I forget, I was watching earlier in the broadcast, he was one of the top five in something, and he's playing in some sort of tournament next weekend. And mm-hmm. you guys know what I'm talking about? What am I talking about? No, but, I mean, good for him. At least he gets an opportunity to redeem himself. Well, let's look at that. We should have known that before, but. Yeah. Bongles. We're yeah. not a research podcast. We just shoot from the hip. Yeah. So, unfortunate, you know, this season, you know, second place, first loser. It is what it is. We beat Oklahoma um, State, so fuck them. Yeah, so um, it is what it is, but 
moving on. We, we still have another team that might win a national championship uh, coming up here yeah. in the next, the next month. The next it's yeah. crazy to think. I think – I don't know if we talked about this on a, a podcast before this or, you know, when we're just hanging out. But Oklahoma has got so much talent in all sports right now, it seems like. Like we're – there's no reason we shouldn't compete in that in, or be in the conversation for national championships for almost yeah. every every major sport. And – it's insane that we could have potentially, you know, gone at least, you know, springtime, summertime, I guess, two nationals, two national championship winners. And I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure someone can research it, but like, I can't imagine that it's easy and it's been probably a very long time since the school swept in, in major mm-hmm. sports or, or in every sport worth national championships. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, oh, well, we'll move on. Um, we always, get them next year and the team's going to be good. So uh, we've got a great program, um, you know, so Oklahoma state does too, and we'll be competing for in Bedlam and see what happens next year. But uh, the final topic we've got, and before we move on, it'll be Brandon paying his, his uh, fine, third and final bet. Uh, you might forget. Yeah. Without Ever. further ado, go ahead. Before we leave. And while he's doing that, I really hope Bo Jin, from Oklahoma State, that guy's really good at golf. He just needs to go, you know, find a way to the tour. Go play in the PGA, leave college. You don't need an education, but you came here to play golf. You can go do that at a very young age and get paid a lot of money. Yeah, uh, that would be that would be ideal. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So Brandon has now paid his bet. Um, we will f- move on to the third and final topic, talking about a little bit about uh, OU football recruiting. Um, with with uh, the Champ U barbecue coming up in about two and a half weeks. I believe that's like June 18th, uh, June 18th or June 19th, uh, yeah. that weekend, and uh, which is pretty exciting. Finally, the recruiting dead period has ended. And uh, from what Jose has been, been able to see, Zion Branch is, has announced that he's, he's going to be attending uh, the barbecue um, that in a couple of weeks. And he's from Bishop Gorman High School out in Las Vegas. And, you know, it's really starting to show those DeMarco Murray connections with his recruiting and him playing high school there and um, Branch is a safety, I believe. And, you know, another defensive back that Grinch is getting on campus that's, you know, highly, highly recruited and highly ranked. And um, it's pretty exciting to see. Do you guys have anything to add to that or any comments about the recruiting and what we should expect over the next two and a half weeks? Uh, I mean, I think the biggest thing, like you said, it, it's really showing DeMarco Murray's value as, as a recruiter. But it also shows, like, how good Lincoln Riley has been on hiring, you know, staff. Because he's kept, you know, his core with Gundy and uh, Coach B, you know, the, the major position coaches in um, his head recruiter in Gundy. But when we had Shane Beamer two years ago, and now he's a head coach. Uh, I believe is, is it on the SEC or ACC? He's uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. So, I mean, he got a head coaching position. He wasn't like, he wasn't an OC. I think he was like a special teams coach. So when he went there, what was that? I, I believe Beamer had some sort of ties to South Carolina. Yes. He, he yeah, was he on had... the coaching staff there with, with the old ball coach. Mm-hmm. Um, co- yeah. That guy probably beer bongs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But like, I mean, you see all these young coaches that have aspirations to obviously be head of coaches like Beamer, you know, has reached. And I feel like if the market, if we keep getting all these kids from Las Vegas and more specifically Bishop Foreman, you know, Murray's alma mater, like he's going to start getting a lot of eyes on him for, for head coaching jobs at schools that are struggling, like, like South Carolina was, you know, maybe he'll go somewhere in the ACC because a lot of those schools are struggling. If you're not Clemson, you're, you're not very good in the ACC. So they, they might, we might be seeing DeMarco Murray uh, get, get a, a different job soon, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, good for him if that, if that is what happens to, uh, to be in the next coming years. Yeah. So it's exciting. I mean, we, I think there's around 50 recruits that are confirmed going to the, to the barbecue, which is just insane the amount of four and five stars between the 2022 and 2023 class, you know, even if we get 30% to commit to us within a few weeks after that, 
That's what I was going to say. That's, just, you, dude, that's just the, incredible. I was like going back on your point earlier, like you mentioned, it's definitely a good time like in Oklahoma athletics. Obviously golf, you know, finish the second. Never want to finish second, but you're in a national championship game. Softball is the, the favorite. Can we say that at least to win? Yeah. I, I would imagine. Yeah. And then you look at Oklahoma in football. They're going to be a lot of people's favorites too. It's it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there there hasn't been a time, you know, within the last five to ten years, Oklahoma sports was under Joe Castiglione and and his guidance. We Oklahoma's really improved, and it's it's exciting to see um, various programs, various sports competing for national titles and. You can't forget the gymnastics, men's and women's, and um, you know. Well, always yeah, win. I mean, doesn't wasn't the men's like half the men's program or all of them like Olympians it, last I mean, time it around? Was some, it was something crazy, and then you know Porter Moser is exciting. You know, now with Coach K leaving and Roy Williams is gone, you know some of the blue bloods are. You know, you still have Coach Cal from Kentucky and Bill Self at Kansas, but they're starting to be a little bit of a turnover, you know, with, with the, who the big time coaches are. And so we'll I'm see. excited for OU basketball next year. Cause it's kind of like Hose, him and I used to talk about it. I kind of like that old school kind of defensive minded, like kind of basketball. Like we're not taking dumb shots. Now we're not pulling threes from half quarter, three feet beyond the arc. We're playing, we're driving to the rim, we're passing and we're defending. And I feel like, if you look at the roster we currently have, that's kind of what Porter Moser looks like we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm just grit and grind through. And, uh, no, I think it's a winning basketball formula. It's a little more old school, like you said. And, you know, it's not the trend right now, but sometimes that, that's that's the way you have to win. And, is, uh, yeah. We're going to so. see a lot of high post screens more than likely. You know, means our big men will be – free throw line area, setting screens for, for our guard just swinging back and forth until they find an opening to either cut in or, or find an open man and, you know, lay up or dunk. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, we don't have, at least from what we know of these players, we don't have any sharp shooters. They might be good, but they're not pretty young. Just the ones we retained as far as, actually, just one. Emoji Gibson, I would say, is a sharp shooter. Yeah, and that's, that's about it. Point. Yeah, at least right now, but you know, we kind of got off on a little bit of a tangent, but I, I, t I definitely agree. I think being an Oklahoma, Oklahoma sports fan, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time and for that. I think it's only going to get better over the next five to 10 years too. And we'll see. We'll see. We have one of the best athletic directors in, in all of college. So for sure. Pretty good. You guys have any, um, any final thoughts? Um, you know, the only thing I can think of is, Next week at this time, uh, Brandon will have to pay his bet, or I was, Jose, Jose I was and I will have to. closing point. I was next. I can't wait for you guys to bust out your beer bong and do your your beer tomorrow or next yeah. week. See, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it'd be a good. I kind good of reason hope to start too. going on a on a losing streak here because it, this might kind of help us get people to watch. You know, we can. I was gonna say, it makes start putting a tag. The constant losing streak. Brandon Martin continues to goes on to the next 30. Packs. If we made it a weekly thing and someone's always beer bong and that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, we might have to start making this a weekly deal with, with various bets with the most relevant, um, I can't most lose relevant that topic. I mean, you could, you could. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what you're betting. We'll, I would we'll see. If you did. Yeah, that'd be good. Here's the deal, though. So the it. bet for this week that we currently have is OU run rules them twice. Right. You guys want to see that? Yeah, it's yeah. not. A, it's a win-win for us, really. Yeah, it's either OU, you know, just squashes them and we don't have anything to worry about, and we have to beer, you know, beer bong or shotgun, whatever, or we still, you know, Oklahoma still wins and we get to watch you beer bong uh, another couple Again. of fruity drinks. <laughs> we'll find out next next Thursday. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Why not, right? That's good. we'll see. So, Jose, do you have anything else to add, or, or are we good to go? I think we're good to go. Don't forget to like, follow. We're on Spotify now, so go follow our Spotify page. You'll be notified every time we post something new on there. Um, 
And, you know, like, like I always say, it'll help us keep growing this little podcast we're having here. Definitely. Uh, catch you guys next week and uh, we'll see what the bet results are. And uh, beer bong. we endorse it. I have two playing sports. I think at this rate, we might actually need to create a beer bong. Yeah, we might have to. <laughs> we might have to. So, all right. Catch you guys next week. Like, comment, subscribe, add anything, you know, comment and let us know what you think. See you. See you.